Hello everybody, I am back for another movie review, and this time, instead of doing one movie, I am actually going to do uh, multiple this time, because all four of these movies that I have here are actually part of a franchise. And the franchise I'm about to talk about here is the Hatchet franchise. So, here are all four movies so far. Here's Hatchet, Hatchet 2, Hatchet 3, and... Hatchet 4, a.k.a. Victor Crowley. Uh, the Hatchet films are a series of uh, slasher movies that came out back in the late 2000s, uh, the 20, throughout the 2010s, and uh, all uh, worked on by uh, filmmaker Adam Green. He directed them all, except for Hatchet 3. Uh, these films, honestly, are a great throwback to the days of 80s horror, about you know teenagers running in terror from uh, monstrous killers, and being hacked to pieces. And that's exactly what the Hatchet films are. I won't go into extreme detail about the Hatchet movies. Again, I don't want to I don't want to give too many uh, spoilers away, especially for people that have yet to see these films. Um, I definitely want to give a disclaimer that the movies are definitely not for the faint of heart. I know people there are a lot of people out there that obviously love watching movies, but are definitely are not really big fans of these films. I'd say the Hatchet films are definitely more for people that are like, you know, diehard uh, horror fans or gorehound fans like myself, which is one of the reasons why I absolutely love, I actually enjoy these movies thoroughly because they're actually a lot of fun to watch. And the gore effects are incredible. The kills are just absolutely brutal. But anyway, enough of that. Let's kind of get into each one individually. The first Hatchet was released back in 2007 by director Adam Green. It didn't get released on Blu-ray until 2010, I believe. So it kind of, well, well, DVD, obviously, it's been around. So then the Blu-ray came out through uh, Anchor Bay. Hatchet, obviously, uh, is sort of like the brainchild of Adam Green. He uh, came up with the concept at a young age and ultimately uh, kind of went with it over time and ultimately managed to get it made as a feature film. And it basically is a great, like I said, excellent throwback to old, what old school American horror really is. A group of uh, tourists basically go out to a swamp and they cross into a uh, a monstrous guy named Victor Crowley who basically just just proceeds to cut them all to pieces because they invaded his territory. And of course, uh, yeah, all sorts of craziness uh, ensues. The one thing I really love about the Hatchet films is how Adam Green managed to get many veteran horror actors to be in pretty much any of the films. I mean, in uh, the first Hatchet, we got Robert England, uh, Tony Todd, and of course, uh, Victor Crowley himself is actually played by Kane Hodder, who played Jason Voorhees in four of the Friday the 13th films. So, and I also like to add, the first movie has Joel David Moore, who would go on to be in, uh, who would go on to be in Avatar, the first one, and The Way of Water, which is pretty impressive. Pretty impressive move there for him. But, yeah, I mean, like I said, that's pretty impressive. And uh, the movie also has Perry Shen, who uh, I think is the only other actor, as far as I know, besides Kane Hodder, that did appear in all four of the Hatchet movies, if I, if I can think of any others. But, yeah, I mean, of course, also, I forgot Joshua Leonard, who was in the Blair Witch Project. Forgot about him there. But, yeah, I mean... Uh, Joel Murray, the uh, brother of uh, Bill Murray. <laughs> I forgot he was in this, yeah. But, yeah, the first Hatchet is a lot of fun. Uh, it really is. Definitely a worthwhile horror film to check out. So, All right, moving on to Hatchet 2. Hatchet 2 pretty much picks up right where the first movie left off with uh, Mary Beth, the only survivor, uh, managing to escape the clutches of uh, Victor Crowley. And she manages to... Uh, recruit a group of uh, hired guns to go back into the swamp to finish off Victor Crowley once and for all. The only major difference between this film and the uh, set and the first movie is uh, this time uh, the actress uh, uh, Tamara Feldman played Mary Beth in the first movie, and I think that's her right there. But for the sequels, she was ultimately replaced by Danielle Harris. Now, uh, I'm not sure the reason why, because I guess Tamara Feldman either moved on to other things, or she had no intention of uh, coming back to the series to play uh, Mary Beth again. 
But either way, Danielle Harris is a nice welcoming uh, sight to see for horror fans because she too is a horror veteran herself. I mean, come on. Played Jamie Lloyd in Halloween's 4 and 5. Uh, she even played Annie in uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween remake as well as its sequel. She even played a goth chick in Urban Legend. <laughs> so she is literally a horror, a horror screen queen herself. And it's nice to see her become a... Uh, <laughs> a badass uh, heroine in the Hatchet films. It's actually a lot of fun. Adam Green returned to direct the sequel, which I believe debuted in 2010. Oh, no wonder the first Hatchet came out on Blu-ray in 2010, obviously to help promote the sequel. Uh, the only the, Another difference is that the sequel was released on Blu-ray through Dark Sky Films. Um, so far, the Hatchet films did get limited releases theatrically, and they were released unrated. Because, uh, I, I, yeah, they, they were released unrated. But they got limited releases. But, again, still. Anyway, moving on to Hatchet 3. Which, by the way, was the first film in the franchise. Adam Green, although he was involved with it, he wrote it. And uh, he was an executive producer. He wrote and executive produced, but he didn't direct. This time, B.J. McDonnell, who I believe was a camera operator on, the f on Hatchet 2... Yeah, there he is, B.J. McDonald, who yeah was a camera operator on Hatchet Two, uh, chose to direct Hatchet was chosen to do Hatchet Three. Hatchet Three once again picks up right where the right where Hatchet Two left off. Basically, the Hatchet films are kind of pulling the same move that the Phantasm films had. You know, for anybody that watches the Phantasm films, where the first movie ended, it pretty much picks up where the sequel begins, and where Phantasm Two ends, that's where Three picks up. And where three picks up, that where three ends is where four picks up, and where four ends is where five picks up. And Hatchet Three, I mean, like basically, you could seam all three, all three of these films together, and they would be one giant movie. That's pretty impressive, I have to say. Not many horror franchises have uh, have endings to their movies that do that. Literally. Right where the end credits end with the first Hatchet is right where Hatchet 2 picks up. And right where Hatchet 2 ends is immediately where Hatchet 3 begins. In Hatchet 3, Mary Beth once again, uh, this time she ends up enlisting the help of a local police chief and his ex-wife to ultimately uh, try to find a way to end Victor Crowley once and for all while local SWAT team and medical forces show up to try to take out Victor Crowley once and for all. But of course... Uh, the police chief's ex-wife learns about a secret that is is like essential to ending Victor Crowley forever, ending his curse. Now, of course, the story of Victor Crowley goes, you know, he was born horribly disfigured, and of course the father had a uh, affair with another woman, and on his wife was on her deathbed, and she ultimately ended up cursing the uh, the mistress, who ended up giving birth to Victor Crowley. She actually died after giving birth, and uh, Victor was born horribly disfigured. And unfortunately, one night, a group of local kids tried to pull a Halloween prank on him. Unfortunately, they end up setting the house on fire. The father tries to rescue his son, but not while well, he's trying to hack down the door with an axe, trying to break open the door to get his son out. But unfortunately, his son was right against the door. He broke through with the axe and ultimately embedded the axe right into his son's skull, killing him. So... Which explains the giant gash on uh, Victor Crowley's head. And unfortunately, since he was cursed, he was cursed to be called to become a repeater, which means every night he relives the same tormented night that he uh, that he died. So no matter what you do to this guy, the next night he will be reborn the same way he comes back the same way that he was when he died. So. And in Hatchet 3, they find out, they discover a way to end him once and for all. Now, I think Hatchet 3, I think Adam Green, was, at one point, probably intended for this one to be the final film in the series. But then, surprisingly, lo and behold, there was actually a fourth one made. This is Hatchet 4, but it goes by, a diff, but it goes by this title, Victor Crowley, which was released, uh, by the way, Hatchet 3 came out in 2013, I believe. Yep. Uh, movie itself and the Blu-ray 2013, also by Dark Sky Films, by the way. Uh, Victor Crowley was released in 2017, I believe. Uh, yeah, released in 2017. Uh, 
but the Blu-ray came out the following year, 2018. Uh, Victor Crowley takes place 10 years after the events of Hatchet 3, so no, uh, no, uh, yeah, so a different ending. So uh, this time, instead of uh, Mary Beth, this time we got another survivor who ends up returning to the swamp where Victor Crowley once was. Now, of course, Victor Crowley is obviously, he is fully defeated. That is until uh, one girl there decides to pull out a cell phone to apparently play the curse that, uh, that ultimately brought uh, Victor ends up bringing Victor Crowley back to life, and of course the chaos once again ensues. Body count rises, and before you know it, they're on they're in them for the fight of their lives. Uh, Adam Green returned to write and direct uh, the fourth movie, and so oh yeah, something I forgot to mention. When I was talking about Hatchets two and three. Uh, Hatchet two has a uh, again uh, Tony Todd returns to play his character. Uh, uh, film director Tom Holland, no, not the Spider-Man Tom Holland, I'm talking about the filmmaker Tom Holland, the one who did Fright Night, Child's Play, Langoliers, and Thinner, yeah, that child, that, uh, that Tom Holland, um, let's see here, A.J. Bowen, uh, I think that name is familiar to me uh, a little bit, uh, the guy that plays Trent in, uh, Hatchet 2, he played, uh, Leatherface in, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, the one from 1989, that one, so it's nice to see him there. Hatchet 3 also has a uh, couple of... Uh, and also, I believe, Lloyd Kaufman of Troma even makes an appearance in Hatchet 2. Just a brief appearance, which is pretty cool. Um, Hatchet 3, uh, let's see here. Uh, Derek Mears, he played uh, Jason Voorhees in the Friday the 13th remake. And it's actually great because there's a scene in the movie in which he and uh, uh, Victor Crowley clash. Carolyn Williams is a bit of a horror veteran herself. I mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, even Leprechaun 3. Zach Galligan, who played William Peltzer in the two Gremlins films for Joe Dante. He even appeared in a couple of films for uh, director uh, Anthony Hickox. Uh, Waxwork 1 and 2, and had a small appearance in uh, Warlock the Armageddon. So Zach Galligan is a bit of a horror veteran himself. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Victor Crowley has a couple of uh, horror veterans. Uh, um, Dave Sheridan, who uh, worked with Rob Zombie on Devil's Rejects, and he played uh, he played Officer Doofy and was the uh, Ghostface killer in Scary Movie. Also, uh, Felissa Rose is in the film, and she is probably best known as Angela from Sleepaway Camp. So it's great to see her in the film. Tiffany Shepis is in here too, and she too is a horror veteran. She play she appeared in tons of movies. Uh, Laura Ortiz, Hills Have Eyes, oh, the original, oh, the remake. And, of course, uh, she appeared in the TV series Holliston, which, by the way, Adam Green was, uh, was involved with. So, yeah, I mean, this, I mean, these movies all have incredible, uh, an incredible lineup of B-movie, uh, horror veterans littered throughout each film, which is pretty impressive. So, the Hatchet films range in quality, you know, some are better than the others. Uh, I would say out of all of them, I would probably have to go with Hatchet 2 as probably my favorite of the four movies. I mean, these ones are going to be a little hard to rate because these films are simple and to the point, but yeah, I mean, I could give these movies like, you know, three and a half, four star ratings, so this time I'm probably going to ignore that and just say, you know what, this is probably one rare occasion where I don't even know if I would rate any of these films, but if I were to rate the entire franchise... I'll get to that momentarily, but first, let's talk about the Blu-rays themselves. Um, <clears throat> the first Hatchet was released on Blu-ray through Anchor Bay, and is the only one of the four movies to be released by Anchor Bay. So here's what the here's what the disc looks like. It's pretty neat, though. Uh, honestly, Hatchet actually got a pretty impressive release on Blu-ray through Anchor Bay. The video quality on the disc is really good. I'm impressed with how well this film looks. Uh, the, yeah, it's presented in one seven, eight by one widescreen anamorphic. And honestly, it looks really good, but there's a lot of detail. So this is actually a pretty solid release by Anchor Bay. I would say for the video quality out of five stars, I'd probably give it a four and a half. That's how good this movie looks. It's a very dark film too, especially in the second half when all the people are in the swamp. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's some parts of the movie are going to be a bit hard to see, but yeah, the detail still really good. Especially, even in the night scenes, there's still really a lot of good detail to be seen. 
As for the audio, once again, I think it's just as good, it sounds as good as it looks. It's, there's only one audio track, and it's in Dolby True HD 5.1, and it sounds really good. It's very beefy. The scares are really good, and again, the, uh, the gore effects, like I said, they, the sound effects with the gore and everything, and of course, it's all, it all looks and sounds fantastic, but the audio, definitely, the audio sounds really good. I would say out of five stars, again, the audio gets a four and a half for me, out of five. As for the extras, uh, believe it or not, there's actually a nice amount of material to be found here. Uh, starting off, there's uh, two audio commentary tracks. One, uh, is, this is, I guess, is a brand new commentary recorded specifically for this release. No, I mean, all the other stuff, obviously, is on the, probably on the DVD, but this was made specifically for the Blu-ray. Adam Green and Kane Hodder both talk about the film in great detail. Uh, the second commentary is uh, with uh, Adam Green, the cinematographer, Will Barrett, and, Barrett, and uh, actors Tamara Feldman, Joel David Moore, and Dean Richmond, as they all talk about the movie. Uh, the commentaries are actually a lot of fun to listen to. Adam Green definitely knows his craft. This guy definitely, this guy talks an awful lot about the film, so definitely both of these are actually well worth listening to if, if you're fans of the film. Making of, obviously, it's a... It's a retro piece on the making of the film. Meeting Victor Crowley, obviously talking about the uh, the character, uh, and obviously meeting up with Kane Hodder and getting into the character. Guts and gore, doing all the uh, gore effects for the movie. Anatomy of a Kill, obviously doing all the kill sequ uh, doing at least one of the kill scenes in particular. Twisted Tale, I I didn't I didn't check that one out, so I, I'm not sure I can't remember what that is. A gag reel and uh, and the film's trailer. So all in all, this is actually a well rounded out supplemental package to weave through. I would say out of five stars, the uh, I would say this one the the bonus features get a four out of five. All in all, the first hatchet actually gets a well rounded release on Blu-ray. Anchor Bay did a great job with this one. So if you're if you're trying to find some good horror films to get on Blu-ray. Hatchet's a good one to pick up, so I definitely recommend it. Great release for a movie. Hatchet 2, like I said, was released on Blu-ray through Dark Sky Films, and uh, and again, just like the first movie, unrated. And uh, honestly, Hatchet 2 also looks pretty good on Blu-ray, although probably not as good as the first movie, so the video quality is a little, is slightly less than the first movie, but still, still looks really good. Uh, also, it's yeah, it's presented in one seven eight by one. Now, being in one seven eight, which means there will there will be no bars at the top of the screen, top or bottom, so the image fits the entire screen. That's what one seven eight by one means. It fits the entire screen, especially for people that own flat screen TVs. Uh, the video quality looks good. I mean, Dark Sky is kind of up and down with their Blu-rays. Some of them look really good, and some of them, like uh, for anybody that owns the House of the Devil. That movie was meant to look grainy because director Ty West shot it that way. He shot it with the grainy look to give it the old school look. And again, Hatchet 2 kind of retains that somewhat. But either way, this is actually a pretty a decent good looking title for a Dark Sky release. So I would say out of five stars, this one I'd probably give maybe four out of five. Probably for the video. The audio... Uh, it, Although it says Dolby Digital 5.1 on the back here, uh, it is DTS. I do I do believe it was on the D, on the Blu-ray because when I checked it out, it is in DTS. So the audio again sounds I would say actually I think the audio sounds better than the video does to me. I would say out of five stars, the video uh, the audio also gets a uh, I would say probably four out of five. Uh, bonus features, once again, there's a uh, nice amount of material to weave through. Once again, a pair of commentaries uh, that go deep into the making of the film. Uh, both of them have Adam Green, and again, he just goes deep into uh, talking about the characters. Uh, talking about the story, coming up with the concepts. And there's also uh, behind-the-scenes looks at the movie, a couple, uh, a couple of featurettes on the making of the film. Trailer, teaser, TV spot, radio spot, so... Although this bonus material package is not as uh, extensive as what is on the first movie, but still, what's on there, though, is enough to satisfy fans. I would say out of five stars, the extras get a, uh, I'd say maybe a three and a half out of five. Again, still not bad. Still a pretty good supplemental, still a pretty good uh, 
all around great, re decent release for my personal favorite of the uh, four movies by far. Hatchet 3 also gets released on Blu-ray by Dark Sky Films, and uh, I would say, again, it's a uh, pretty well-rounded out uh, Blu-ray. I would say everything I said about Hatchet 2, uh, I would say is on par with the, is on ha the same with Hatchet 3. The one difference is that Hatchet 3 was released on Blu-ray. The image is in 235 by 1, so it's in Pan it's in, yeah, it's in Panavision. So that's the one major difference. Also, you kind of notice these movies are not long. I mean, the longest one I think I came across was uh, Hatchet 2, which I think was 86 minutes, I think. Yeah, th these films are not long at all. They're very short. <laughs> they're all like, yeah, they're all in like the 80, they're all in like the 80 to 86 minute range. So they're all pretty short movies. Um, Hatchet 3, once again, I think it looks really good. I would say... Hatchet 3 definitely looks a little better than Hatchet 2. So I would say out of 5 stars, the video gets a 4 out of 5. Audio, I think, is just as good. Actually, I think it sounds better than the than the first two than the first than the sequel does. I would say it's about as good as the first movie. So I would say for the audio, probably a, a four and a half. And again, although it says English 5.1, it's still a DTS track, as you can see. Uh, again, the bonus features are uh, so yeah, I'd say the audio gets a four and a half, or maybe, or did I say that already? Yeah, I would say for the bonus features, uh, again, still uh, not bad. I mean, a pair of commentaries, both with Adam Green, and both with the director B.J. McDonald, as they both talk about the film in great detail, and, uh, and many others included. Uh, there's three featurettes: uh, Hatchet Three behind the scenes, Raising Cain, Swamp Fun, and a trailer and a teaser. So the extras, I'd say, are on par with. Uh, what uh, the, the, the sequel had. So I would say out of five stars, three and a half. So that's that. Victor Crowley on Blu-ray was released again by Dark Sky Films, but inside of here we get a combo pack, a Blu-ray and a DVD. Blu-ray and the DVD. And uh, once again, I would say Victor Crowley, uh, honestly, the... I was looking for like a review of this on Blu-ray.com. Unfortunately, they haven't done a review yet. I don't know if High Def Digest did one. I think they did, but honestly, Victor Crowley looked pretty good on Blu-ray. I was pretty impressed with it. The video, once again, is presented in uh, anamorphic Panavision. This time, two, three, nine by one. Is there a difference? I guess two, three, nine. The black bars are bigger on the top and bottom of the screen. But hey, look at that. Two, three, five. Two, three, nine. Hmm. I don't know. But overall, the video looks pretty good on Victor Crowley. I would say out of five stars, the video gets a, again, four probably out of five. It looks really good. Not perfect, but it looks really good. The audio, again, is just pulse pounding. It sound, You know what's funny, though, because now we got an English 2.0 track. I don't think any of the, I don't think Hatchets 2 or 3 had that. You know what? No, they didn't. They didn't have that at all. <laughs> they actually get a 2.0 track, hard to believe. <laughs> but I chose to go with a 5.1, and again, it's pulse pounding. I would say out of five stars, four and a half. The extras, once again, I would say they're slightly on par with uh, what's on the previous entries, but I would say I would have to rate this one a little higher than what we got. Again, pair of commentaries, both with Adam Green and both uh, Taka with several cast members and crew members as they talk about the movie in great detail and length. Um, Raising the Dead, again, interview with Adam Green. It's like a 30-odd minute uh, interview with him as he looks back on uh, creating the character, the history, how he came to making the fourth movie. Behind the scenes, believe it or not, I, I checked into this. There's over an hour worth of material on the making of the film here, but it's really like all fly on the fly shot stuff that... Uh, where, you know, you just had some cameraman or crew member just start filming random stuff during the filming of the movie. And the film's trailer and teaser. So I would say this, plus the two commentaries, and plus the half-hour interview, I would say out of five stars, the extras do get a solid four for me out of five. So, again, a very well-rounded-out Blu-ray package. So the Hatchet films, honestly, all look really good in high def. They all do. All four of them. And they all have a great, they all have great video, all have great audio. The extras are just plentiful between all four movies combined. 
I would say as a whole for the entire franchise, I would say out of five stars, I'd probably give the entire thing probably three and a half out of five. Um, I could rate the four films individually, but like I said, I, it almost would sound like a disservice doing that because, you know, it's as a franchise as a whole, I figured it would be nice to talk about all four at the same time. So it is a lot of fun. These movies are a lot of fun. Like I said, if you're a gore hound or a horror fan, these are fun to watch. Gore effects are fantastic. The scares are pretty good, too. And Kane Hodder definitely made one hell of a uh, terrifying villain as Victor Crowley. I mean, got to give him kudos. And definitely got to give Adam Green kudos, too, for coming up with a franchise like this. Um, he and Daniel Harris have confirmed that there are going to be more Hatchet films. Uh, Daniel Harris herself confirmed uh, that there are at least two more on the way. Adam Green said that with the success of Victor Crowley, he said a fifth film is possible. It can happen. And honestly, if you're gonna if Adam out there, if you're out, if you watch this at one point, if you do a fifth movie, I'll definitely be there to check it out. I actually enjoy these movies thoroughly. And I did enjoy your film Frozen and uh I even watched Digging Up the Marrow. I think that was a fun movie. That was actually recommended by my friend Will. <laughs> so honestly Adam, I think you did a fantastic job with these movies. And yeah, I mean, although these films had limited runs in the theaters, the home video market is where these films make their buck. I mean, these films were big sellers on Blu-ray. Yes, they were. Especially the first Hatchet. So all in all, I would say definitely give these movies a shot. Definitely give the Hatchet films a look if you're into horror fans. If you're into horror films and gore. If you are, then by all means. But uh, if you're not, then I would suggest waiting until you actually are a seasoned pro with uh, horror films. Because, like I said, the kills in these movies are not for the faint of heart. In fact, honestly, I think, well, the kills are actually there for the fun factor and the uh, just to show how powerful Victor Crowley can be. But, again, if you're not a horror fan, I would say watch at your own risk. Or I would just wait until you become a seasoned pro of horror films. But for anybody else, anybody who's a diehard horror fan, Gorehound, definitely check these movies out. So, this concludes the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will continue to do more videos in the days to come. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel. Until then, take care, and be safe.